Hey there. Today we're going to be checking out a wiring of a Wi-Fi smart switch. This is a Model T110. I picked this one up off Amazon. Um, I think they were $24 for four of them off Amazon.ca. Um, you can get them far cheaper on Walmart.ca or Walmart.com. Actually, if you go into the Walmart website and start looking for smart switches and whatnot and get past all the pre-made things. They have an amazing stock of uh, do-it-yourself pre-wired stuff so you can do it all yourself, um, customize it to your own applications and infinitely cheaper than what you buy them for pre-made. I think one or two plugs pre-made can make 40, 50 bucks easy Canadian. Um, but you start going into there and you could do it for pennies and these ones specifically they're rated for a maximum load of 10 amps so you can start getting into um, like small lightweight power bars if you're just doing small things lights or whatever um, any number of small things up to 10 amps right so it, very um, customizable for most people so they're pretty self-explanatory, but there are a few things that is handy to know if you're just opening the box and never done one before, and I'm going to pass on what I've learned to you. So here we go. This is a Wi-Fi Smart Switch Model T110, like I said. It has a power AC 90 volts to 250 volts, so it's smart on the inside too. It uh, adjusts for whatever you plug it into. So you can plug it in for wire for 120, well 90, uh, up to 250 volts. So that's pretty handy. Um, like I said, it also has a 10 amp maximum load. Uh, Wi-Fi is your 802.11 B, G, and N, uh, and the radio frequency of 2.4 G. So um, yeah, let's get right to it. So inside the box comes with pretty much everything you need. You got your screws, don't lose those, they're necessary, your instruction manual, and there should be, oh, there's the other one, two of these end caps. So they just kind of slide onto place and they crimp since your uh, cables going in and out on them. Uh, very easy to figure out. The smart switch itself is small, it can be bolted or screwed into places, um, you can hang it free in some applications if it's light load, not a, a heavy use kind of an area. Uh, on the front has your basic information and one switch, which I'll get into in a minute, and that's about it. It has your bridges on the inside, so you screw them down, put the wire in, screw them down, you're done. And very self-explanatory pretty much like for all intents and purposes these ones we'll get to the wiring portion of it right off the bat so you undo these a little bit they should come done mostly out but depending on the wire size you're putting into it for what i'm going to demonstrate today not what I'll probably keep it on, but what I'm going to demonstrate on today is a small axle fan, muffin fan. Handy, very handy to have a smart switch on, actually. Um, you can use it in a lot of places, and we'll get into that in a minute, too. I'm sure you can think of all the different places you could use it. You might want a fan where you could just say, hey, this on, and it will turn it on. One thing I forgot to mention is these ones work with Alexa, Google Home, or your smartphone. So you can um, run it with any or all of them at any given time. So first of all, we're going to take this cord, it's your regular 110 North America cord on it. And we're going to split it in the center here a little bit without clipping the wires. Just my own personal preference for doing that. Do it any number of ways, clip it first and then do it. And you want to strip off a small bit off the end of the wires, there a little bit of them, not too too much. You can see there. And you do that on both connections. Now one thing you might want to do, well, 
necessary that you do do it is watch how you put these wires into the switch. The first time I did it, I didn't. In a rush, I came, I don't know what I'm doing. And, uh, well, <laughs> I wired it backwards and it wouldn't work. So I was wondering why it wouldn't work for a minute. But pretty quickly you figure out that there is an input and output on these ones. It's not like other things where you just wire it up either way, AC, and it'll go both directions. This one does have a specified in and out, so be aware of that when you're putting it together. So your ins go in on one side and your outs on the other. So what I did there is I made the wires short enough so that when I put them in, there is no bared section out of it. So it's not sitting out like that where there's portions of bared wire um, visible or where something could bridge them in contact and cause a fire or other such negative crap to happen. So with that one, put in your first wire, double check you got that on your input. It's a whole cut once, measure twice kind of philosophy applied to electric applications. So double check as you go along. If I was doing this for a more permanent installation, I would probably uh, tin the wires going in it just with a soldering iron. That's me. I am like that. I do that with almost everything I'm putting together for a long-term installation. This I'm not, so I'm not overly worried about it, but I would in other circumstances. That's, like I said, that's just me. I'm quirky like that. I like to have the tinned wires and whatnot years of doing things and having them fall apart at inopportune times has made me kind of cautious and maybe overly so but it works for me so again make sure your wires are twisted because when you're putting them into this you can get stragglers unfray from the wires and stragglers lead to fires or parking or other again negative reactions and consequences so we don't want that so just make sure that all your any stragglers or whatnot are well twisted in place if they're not take it apart and do it again it's worth it in the long run okay so that's pretty much that there's your connections made um that is going to be it for the slotted screwdriver screwdriver kit i picked off off ebay i was looking for something to do xbox controllers and whatnot and other cell phones and miscellaneous torques and security torques applications and i ordered this it's not entirely what i thought it was going to be when i ordered it and actually after using it a bit and getting to know it i prefer it over what i was actually thinking i was buying so that was kind of a handy surprise, a happy accident. Now, these again, like I said, you just pop them in place, secure one side down just a little bit, and because it's a crimp connection, kind of like a seesaw, how far you do down one dictates how far the other one's going to be allowed to go down while crimping the wire in place. So if you want to have fairly equal and no lips on either side, you want to make sure that you adjust those accordingly. You also don't want to have them done up so tight that these plastic teeth in there run the risk of actually biting into the, uh, through the shielding on the um, insulation on the wires and whatnot. They're plastic, so they won't cause a fire or bridging or anything like that, but it just leads as a, a weak spot, or it can lead to a weak spot. And if you're, used to doing that on plastic applications and you're also going to do it on metal applications and that leads to problems unseen so get used to it if you're going to do it set it up as kind of like a something you do with everything and then you don't have to think am i doing it right there for this application or not you're just kind of doing it right for every application so there that is basically that part of the switch wired up now We'll go on to the second part here, which is going to involve us actually powering this up. So give me one second to set that up. Okay, so what we got here is the switch and it's now powered up. It's plugged in regular 120 volt 
and you'll see underneath here is the blue light blinking under the Wi-Fi signal there. If you don't have the light blinking or on, or blinking fast or blinking slow or on all the time, you probably wired it up wrong or you have something like it's backwards or you have a power problem coming in. So check those things out first. Obviously starting with the easiest of power coming in and then check your connections in and out, make sure they're in the right uh, locations and go from there. Um, those are the things that usually go wrong with them. One thing I also have to mention on it is the instructions and in that are quite small to read, not very easy. They're not that broken English that you find in some products, but um, they're not as easy as other like ones that you buy that are pre-wired and whatnot. So do it yourself pretends to have to accept those things. That's why you get a better price. Um, these QR codes on the outside, ignore them. Uh, if you were to follow this QR code, it would take you to um, the Smart Life app. Smart Life is very, very similar to the eFamily Cloud. In fact, I would say they probably have a lot of the same base code in them. But the eFamily Cloud is a lot more versatile, it's cleaner, it's easier, and um, it can be used with other home devices much easier than the Smart Life. I found Smart Life to be rather difficult and the way it was laid out and it didn't have the same features and whatnot with it so for this video and tutorial i'm going to go with the eFamily cloud and run a quick walkthrough on how to take this switch add it to that app and then basically integrate it into the rest of your smart home so that you have one app and can run several devices off of it um, the eFamily Cloud connects with Alexa and Google Home and whatnot, so there's no problems using it there. And uh, then it really doesn't matter. You use the app as a backup, but you still do all your main controls and stuff and can do them through their apps or the voice commands for either of these two. So these ones work with the app and that will work most of these things. Like I'd say 99.9% that aren't a different language, something like Wink or whatever, um, they will work for the switches and whatnot. So if you are on Google then or Android or whatever, just go right to the Google Play Store and get yourself the app. Once you download that, um, it's relatively easy to hook these things up. So I will do that with a screen capture software so I can show you how things work and whatnot, how to set it up. But they're really easy uh, basically you need to just basically hold the switch until you get that light to be blinking the way it is it's also an on off switch as you can see so you can have manual control if things aren't working the way they should through your smart home applications and um, gizmos like i was saying relatively easy to hook up so if you get this light blinking, that's all you need to get it to connect. And then as long as you install the application into your other things like Echoes and the Googles and those different things, um, it will see and control the switch. So you have to download the app, then you have to uh, enable the skills and um, what not in respective Googles and Echoes and, and once you have those skills in them and set up everything will work and then you can just use it through either the your phone you can use it through any number of like the eFamily Clouds uh, Googles, Echoes uh, those kind of things as well as any IFTTT um, apps and whatnot that you have installed and connected up the same thing to use these and do those switches and lights and you're good to go these things are they're really great like I said they're inexpensive you can see here I put it on a fan so you know hot summer nights whatever you go to bed it's sweltering hot you have the fan on uh, you don't know how long it's going to take, so you can't really use a timer, but you can wake up in the middle of the night and just say, hey, so-and-so, shut this off and not get smacked by your wife or girlfriend for making her get out of bed. Um, you can also put it on things like nightstands or uh, you know lamps that are freestanding in the room. You can wire them into your switches in your house. 
you can wire them into outlets in your house you can wire them into like the coffee pot as long as all those things are 10 amp for this one there are other ampage available and there's things to look into um, you can put them in so many places without having to have the pre-wired ones that take up so much space or whatnot um, you can put them into things without having to buy the ridiculously right now expensive smart bulbs so you could put this on and uh, a string of lights up in the sky you know like you got track lighting or something you don't want to spend 25 bucks each for each bulb or whatever you can put in one you know five ten dollar switch and it will control all those lights uh, the applications are pretty much endless. I mean, you could if you have in uh, in-house vacuum cleaners or whatever, and you don't want to wire it up every time or flip the switch or you know press the trigger. It's your application is you know not conducive to that or whatever. You can wire one of these in and just tell Alexa or that to you know do so and so, and wire up this or turn sorry turn this on, and she will. Very handy very diverse a lot of applications I highly recommend them and once you get past the small hiccups of how to connect them up and which apps in that to use which I'm hoping you'll find useful in this video it's so easy so that's it for the first part and we will get back to the app portion in just one second I'll show you another pen that I've already wired up just so you can see it work Okay, so this is the um, same kind of deal, similar kind of fan, 4-inch uh, muffin fan, axle fan, whatever you want to call them. Switch is wired up, a uh, little different, the same wiring everything else, it's just a little, uh, different distance for the outlet, so I can't really put it all on the screen here. But just to show you how it works and whatnot, is you can either do it by your phone with the app on your phone and just click it on or off like any of your smart lights or other products, smart home products. You can use it through the fan or through the uh, Google or whatever. So let's give it a shot. Hey Google, fan on. Sure, turning on fan. Hey Google, fan off. Simple as one, two, three. So that's the easiest part of this. And now we'll get into the application, the app portion of it. And uh, a little bit trickier, but once you get the hang of it and you see how it's done, it's super easy. So without further ado, let's get right into it. 